So what we want to look at now is we finally come to what we are after, which is the conservation of momentum. Up until now, we've seen how we've had some unknown object interact with an inertial standard, which is one kilogram. And by interacting, we've seen that, um, if you recall, the inertia of the unknown divided by the inertia of the of the inertial standard is the negative of the change in the velocity of the standard divided by the change in the velocity of the unknown. And really this is a a precursor, it's a kind of a um, a momentum equation, right? Uh, the If you multiply this by that you get the change in momentum of the unknown is e plus the change in momentum of the standard equals zero. So we had this, the change in the momentum of the, well, delta p of the unknown plus delta p of the standard was zero. But the question is, does this apply to any two inertias? And we can see here that it actually does. So if you've got a cart 1 and a cart 2, cart 1 has an inertia of 0.36, cart 2 has an inertia of 0.12, and we see how they change their velocities as they interact. By the way, because cart 1 has a three times the inertia of cart 2, um, its change in velocity will only be a third of the change in velocity of cart 2. Cart 2's change in velocity will be three times higher than cart 1. Okay, but now let's have a look at the momentum change of each cart. The initial, before interaction, the momentum of cart 1 was 0 because its velocity was 0. The momentum of cart 2 was 0 0.04 kilogram meter per second. And after interaction, after they collided, they both had a momentum change. So if you had cart 1 and cart 2, right, they came at each other and they collided, okay, and then they started moving away from each other, then we measure the momentum of cart 1 before, and we looked at the momentum of cart 2 before, and then we looked at the momentum of cart 1 after, and the momentum of cart 2 after, we can see the momentum of cart 1 changed by this amount, and the momentum of cart 2 changed by that amount. So delta P1. Okay? And what we'll see, or is it written down here? What we'll actually see is that delta P1 P1 plus delta P2 is zero, meaning this increase of momentum for cart 1 is the negative of, oh, let's put it this way, the change in, in momentum of cart 1 is the negative of the change in the momentum of cart 2. So delta P1 is the negative of delta P2, right? So there has been momentum transfer to each cart individually, no doubt about it. But as a system, th the, the, the amount that of momentum that uh, was changed for cart 1 is the negative of cart 2. So we have the momentum of the system not changing. So this system was isolated, the momentum is not changing, so let's look here. It says the momentum of the system comprising any two colliding objects is not changed by the collision. The collision merely transfers some momentum from one cart to the other cart. One cart gains a certain amount of momentum and the other loses the same amount. Okay? So let's look here. Let's carry on. In an isolated system, momentum does not change. We've seen this before. Uh, delta P is zero in an isolated system. Now, it says here, now this statement is one of the most fundamental principles of physics and is often referred to as the conservation of momentum. For an isolated system, conservation of momentum means delta P is equal to zero. Now, if you've got momentum transfer across the boundary, we do not have an isolated system, and so we have impulse. Okay? 
So there's a, if momentum is transferred across the boundary, we have impulse. J is simply the transfer of momentum from the environment to the system, and it's called the impulse delivered to the system. Okay, see you in the next one.